haya bajado enormemente la temperatura porque nadie va a saber por qué estoy temblando. Pero, um, I'll do the rest in English and let me say straight away, right off the bat, that Murphy strikes again. You know Murphy's Law, if something can go wrong it will and somebody must have seriously messed up if I'm here. Because, um, well, don't laugh too much because you're going to have to listen to me. So, um, let me tell you, I have really no qualifications to fame and Ted other than what my friends call es que es necio, terco y testarudo. And the translation of that is stubborn, mulish, and pig-headed. And with these uh, charming attributes, I have walked my walk, walked my road, slowly for the last 27 years. So my story, what you're going to hear, is a bit like Forrest Gump, but in slow motion. And see, where I come from, where my road begins, my road begins in El México Profundo, deep Mexico, deepest Mexico, under Mexico. It is the Mexico that Bonfil Batalla called the Mesoamerican civilization still alive, still beating. Many of you who are here in Oaxaca know what I'm talking about. To get to the Mexico Profundo, you don't go forward, you don't go backwards, neither in space nor in time. You walk sideways, sideways in time and sideways in your consciousness. Let me try to give you a feeling of that. Maybe you recognize this, though it's not packed, it's not popped, it doesn't have a brand, it doesn't have, this is food. And you see, to get this, you have one growing cycle, maybe two per year. The chaps at the Large Hadron Collider, they at CERN, they have breakfast, they turn on their machine, and by lunchtime, they have a few billion data points. Here, we only have one data point per year perhaps 60 data points in a long lifetime. This is the Mexico Profundo. This is the Mexico Profundo that has another logic, which we've heard during these talks, but you have to understand how deep, how different that logic really is. We've heard the statement that we have to decolonize the collective imaginary. We have to think from another place. We have to come to another understanding of life on Earth. And that is just sideways in time. El Mexico Profundo, my Mexico Profundo, comes from this corner called Huizcazda. And all of you know what I'm talking about. It is infant malnutrition, it is the lack of water, the lack of electricity, the lack of roads, the lack of possibility to communicate. This is my Mexico Profundo, Huizcazda, Valle del Mesquital, 1985, 27 years ago. And once you see that, and you don't have to put numbers to it, how many zeros does it require to really feel and understand a child suffering hunger? Is, is it sufficient for it to be billions, millions? One is enough. Because once you've lived it, you are compelled to do something. That is something that moves not your desire, not your mission. It moves your soul, it moves your ethic. Obviously, you take the quickest road, you study medicine because you are going to be part of the solution. You are not going to be part of the problem. 
And of course, you soon realize how deep the structural violence, how deep the hypocrisy. Because you see, I come from a very, very old school of thought of medicine. I see the patient as, and medicine as a vocation, a vocation to service, not as a market niche for profit and greed. And once you've lived in the hospital and once you've learned about the tact tomographer and the magnetic resonance, you realize that none of that will have any applicability, any reason, any logic, any tool for the field where you're going to work. And so having lived in India and obviously nourished by the thoughts of the great Mahatma, you really take your backpack, take your road, and really you begin to try to construct the world that does not exist and will not exist until you give it shape and life. And so one begins the long journey of the social entrepreneur, just like that. And sometimes you feel Don Quixote and sometimes Sancho Panza, and suddenly and you soon realize that you're really Rocinante. <laughs> you're just the horse trudging step by step and enduring and enduring. And that is perhaps the key. Because once you've endured, once you've been in the field, you realize that you will and can make a difference, but not through your knowledge, not what you can do, but what you can learn. You see, there is the basis of the Hippocratic Code. The basic tenet is primum non noscere, first, do no harm. And of course, you arrive as a social entrepreneur and you want to do this and you want to do that. And you spend one year and two years and no results. And three years and four years and no results. And suddenly you realize it's not a matter of doing. It's a matter first of seeing the logic of that Mexico Profundo. Because for those of you who are in Oaxaca, who have heard the Galaguetza, the Tequio, you understand that humanity there is linked with a different logic. And you have to learn that logic. Because you see, this takes time. This takes centuries. This takes millennia. And those of us who work in the food industry now have the term generally recognized as safe. Yes, generally recognized as, as safe. Yellow number five, cancer. Coca-Cola, diabetes. Nanotubules, the new food. Do you really want to stake your health, that of your family, that of your children, on something that is merely five decades old? Because we learn too late. We learn after the facts how much danger is in our technologies. We don't doubt the power of the technologies. We merely doubt their wisdom. Because it was only two years ago, remember the deep water horizon? Remember Fukushima? And we saw world-class logos, world-class engineers. And what could they do? They drilled the hole, the oil was bubbling forth, and we couldn't even put a plug in it. And yes, the new sources of energy. And yes, there we have Fukushima and the radioactive cloud already in the coast of California. And so it's really first a long patience because you soon learn in the field that it's not so important your know-how as your know-how not. <laughs> because you see, <laughs> that is the real strength. There's so many mistakes. Just checking the watch. <laughs> There's so many mistakes one does make. And let me give you the essence of this talk. For those of you who don't recognize it yet, this is amaranth, amaranto, 
Wautli, Kiwicha, Rajira in India. The next gift of El Mexico Profundo to our food chain. And see, we took this, forgotten as it is, the best food known to, my, to men in terms of vegetable protein. And I took it as a doctor, and of course, I didn't know how to do anything with this. Didn't see it in anatomy, didn't see it in physiology, didn't see it in surgery, and yet I knew it was full of value, so I took it to my community, Whiskas there, and I taught Simon, look, Simon, we're going to sew it like this. And of course, it was first year, and nothing grew. And of course, the doctor advises again, and the second year, and nothing grew. And the third year again, and Simon began to look at me, oh, do you really know what you're doing? Do you really what? And I told him, and I explained, and he listened. And he said, uh-huh, si, sí, doctor, sigamos continuando. Let's continue continuing, because that is the key. Because let me show you. There, at the top, in the left, the charming chap with the red circle, that's me, 25 years ago, I haven't aged. The young kids have, though, the Shirgos, they grew up. And we have no education, we had no high schools, obviously no college, but see, development, the construction, the mission, to be an entrepreneur, do you really need a return on investment? Do you really need any more return on your life than to be of service? Because you see, time is not money, time is life. And unless we begin to understand once again that we have to live in equilibrium in this large, large system which involves us all. Because as a student of medicine, you learn, you immediately learn how systemic is the body, how linked, the feedback forth and back. And no cell wants a Roy. The pancreas doesn't ask, how much insulin are you going to give me? No. It's a balance where each part does what it has to do for the greater good. And if that sounds trite and corny, all you have to do is look around and you will see our world breaking down systemically. And that's what we can learn from the Mexico Profundo. But see, our food chain has been the constant gift thinking from sideways in time, from another logic. And I will end with this. Those kids have grown up 25 years later. They are world class. We delivered to Kellogg, Nestle, etc. They only have a primary school education in the community of Wiscasda, and they've learned in a real society of knowledge and world certified HACCP, hazard analysis and critical control points, whatever that means. And we have full employment and we have 100 people working on our project. But really the only important thing is to remember that yes, from wherever you are, you can take the talk, and the talk is important. I wouldn't talk against talking at a TED talk. <laughs> but the words, yes, the words, they move you, and it's walk the talk, but not as a business plan, not as a ROI, not as what's the investment. It's you move because your life demands that you move. And you begin that long walk, and walk, and step by step, and suddenly you realize that it's not so much the, lock, the walking and the talking, it's enduring and enduring, but you have to endure for a generation because from that type of walk is where true richness, true wealth comes from. So let's all walk the walk because our system requires us to do it, but for a generation. 
Thank you very much.